Welcome back. Welcome back. Of course, we can't, uh, you know, move on to much else without discovering, of course, what the invariant product or um, the four dimensional scalar product of the uh, K is K mu, K mu. Uh, so that's what we want to show. We want to show uh, what is the um, Minkowski force um, with the uh, invariant product. What's it going to be? Uh, so we want to show that this is the case where we have 1 minus u squared divided by c squared cosine squared theta divided by 1 minus u squared over c squared f squared. Um, we've kind of seen something like this before with the fields and the uh, cosines and sines working in. Let's see what we can do now. Um, here it's important to note that theta is the angle between the ordinary velocity and the ordinary force. So here what we know is the Minkowski force, which is the K. Again, the K vector is for the um, four vector components of one, two, and three. The zeroth component is the energy or the power delivered um, technically. So let's kind of dive in using these definitions. Um, noting that we're going to have to be careful with this product because in order to compare and do the dot product, we have to change this uh, covariant vector into the contravariant and then down it across. Again, it just comes at the price of a negative sign. So once we have that, then we can dot component to component. We see that the k naught squared terms stay together. And then we have the spatial dot product as expected. So what do we see here about the k naught? Well, let's see what it is. Uh, you know, with the chain rule, we can get to the de dt, and then from dt d tau, we get everything we need. Um, always be aware of that chain rule effect. And we see that uh, the energy here uh, with respect to T is in the bracket. And we see that we get a cancellation of 1 over C with that C. And then we get to multiply by the derivative of T with respect to tau. So again, simplify down and across. Uh, we're going to have a lot of work to do because we have the U dot here in the bottom. Uh, and that's what leads to the time derivative that we have. We've seen this before not too long ago, so we'll let it pass through and you can see what it is. But then we end up with this, and of course we know that du dt is equal to the original or ordinary uh, acceleration, excuse me. But we could factor out the m and the square root um, and just let everything pass through. What we see here is that after simplifying, we get a 1 half plus a 3 halves, which gives us a square. So everything's fine there. Um, at this point, you could put it in in terms of gamma if you wanted to, but for the sake of comparison, we're going to see what we have left with the uh, k dot k, which is where we get the f squared, and we get the divide by 1 minus u squared c squared. Um, but we also know that f can be written in terms of u and a. So the dot product of u dot f is equal to u f cosine theta. Okay, um, and then we pass forward to what is also true. Here, uh, we found out how to write uh, f in terms of the ordinary velocity and the acceleration not too long ago. So that's where we see it. We just plug in the definition here, and then we'll compare the two definitions. So this thing is where the dot products are going to happen. You see here that u dot u gives us a u squared, and then u dot a is left alone. But we also have a u dot a here. So what do you think? We pull them out. Fair enough. Then we're left with, um, after that, of course, the U uh, in this denominator here, we're going to have to clean it up as best we can. Not always possible, but we end up with a U squared over C squared. After we force factor this 1 minus U squared C squared out, that's where our parentheses here come from. And so you see we can cancel that, cancel that, so that thing goes to 1, so we can tidy up. Now you have a 1 half power here and a... a one power there, which can be written as 2 over 2, hence it reduces down to 3 halves. So what we're saying here is that m u dot a is equal to uf cosine theta times 1 minus u squared divided by c squared to the 3 halves power. So if we plug this in for that dot product relation, we see that the k to the zeroth power boils down to uf cosine theta divided by c with the square root term. And so adding all these together to find the invariant product, um, we see that we get the case not ter or the k not or yeah k not term squared, the dot product term squared, and so we add them together. That's where we see the uh, one coming in for the fraction, 
And so we just got to be careful finding that common denominator. Otherwise, we're good to go and we see things add up nicely. Um, again, with these uh, questions, they're very definition heavy. So if you need to take your time and redeveloping or writing down your notes, covariant, contravariant, what it means to have the four dimensional um, dot product or scalar product or in other text, invariant product, they all come from the same thing. We just have to be able to know how to use them. And that's where the trick is. But yeah, hopefully the step-by-step -step breaks it down a little easier. Um, it's a lot easier to see once you actually write out everything, although it looks cumbersome, but really cool stuff in my opinion.